for professional service providers, what to charge might just be the most stressful decision you ever have to make, especially if you're new to business. There's lots of moving parts to consider to create a really solid pricing structure. So stay tuned for today's episode because I'm going to nail down the key strategies you can employ to get to that magic number. You've got the competition to consider, your own skill set, the price you place on your own value for your expertise, the perceived value of what you do and deliver, what your market will pay, your location and a host of other variables. Working out what to charge can feel like a puzzle you can't easily solve. Hello and welcome back to the Leverage Business Podcast with me, Jay Allison. I am really excited about what I'm going to bring you today because I've had so many of my clients and entrepreneurs in various groups talking about pricing strategies for professional service providers and what to charge. Of course, there are a lot of things that you can use to try and work it all out. And a popular method is to use a calculator. Um, I don't mean like the one you used to use in school. I mean the ones like the one found on Miracy's uh, Cause Business Builder. Here's the link. It's miracy.com. That's M-I-R-A-S-E-E forward slash 2021 forward slash CBB forward slash calculator. And I'll put the link in the show notes for this episode as well. But one of the things that it does is it helps you work out, you know, how many people, how often and how much you need to charge to achieve the revenue that you want. So it's kind of a little formula in the back of it. So you can play around with the numbers. And when you do, it'll quickly tell you what you need to be charging to reach your annual income goals. So it's a great place to start. But what about all those other questions? In this episode, I'll be taking you through some easy pricing strategies to determine your rates or fees, the real way to sell high priced programs and services, why you should never discount your rates and what to do instead, and when to raise your prices and when not to. And then finally, I'll share how to stop undercharging and over delivering in your consulting or coaching services. If you want to discuss your fees like a pro, so you can feel confident and proud about charging what you're worth, make sure you listen to the whole episode to catch that. So let's start with some easy pricing strategies to determine what to charge. Creating a solid pricing structure requires you to do a little bit of research and a bit of soul searching. So with your starting number in mind, perhaps you got it from one of the calculators, or thinking about your annual income, take a look at, first of all, your competition. This might take a little detective work since a lot of consultants, coaches and service providers don't publish their rates. Many, like me, actually only charge for delivering a project or a program with a tangible output or outcomes. But if you pay attention to their websites and social media, ask a few discreet questions and get on their mailing list, you can probably figure out what it is that they charge. Be realistic about who exactly your competition is though. Don't undervalue or oversell yourself. Uh, Don't try to be one of the sort of top guns in the industry when you're only just starting out. In other words, make sure you're comparing yourself to another provider who shares the same skills, market and track record, rather than simply looking at who you strive to become. But obviously, you know, if you've got some qualifications and a book behind you or all kinds of other things that really position your brand and your um, reputation, then absolutely charge what you're worth. I mean, don't undersell your value in the industry. The second thing to look at is your skills. In some fields, this is easy. There are certifications and educational programs that allow you, by virtual of having achieved them, to charge a certain rate. And if you follow this path, then pricing will be easy for you. But if not, take a solid look at what you can legitimately claim as a skill or area of expertise. Look too at your track record, particularly if you're doing something rather unique. Have you proven yourself by helping clients and do you have the testimonials and case studies to show for it? After working with you, do you get repeat business or have your former clients referred others to you? That's great proof that you're super awesome. 
And these are all reasons to maybe consider a higher price range than you might have first thought. And here's an example. Generally speaking, for a 12-week program with weekly content, assignments, Q&A, delivered on a group basis, you can expect to see prices around $1,000 to $2,000. For instance, my Leverage Business Accelerator 90-day group program is £1,997, so that's around $2,500, including a monthly one-to-one support and coaching. My one-to-one individual coaching premium option of the program is £997 a month. So around $13,000-$14,000 a month. The third area for you to look at is your market. In the game of setting rates, it's your market that has the final say. As any first-year economy student can tell you, The price of anything lies where what the buyer is willing to pay meets what the seller is willing to accept. If your goal is to give newbies a helping hand and lead them down the path to success, that unfortunately means you can look forward to lower paying gigs. It's not a bad thing. Everyone has to begin somewhere, but it does need to be acknowledged. If on the other hand, your target market is more established and economically stable, then a higher fee isn't just warranted, it's a must. They're going to expect a higher price and will not find value in the lowest cost provider of anything, whether it's coffee beans or business coaching. Finally, don't forget that pricing is never set in stone. It's flexible. If you find you're attracting the wrong market or no market at all, you can always change your rate. If you feel like you're working too hard for not enough return, raise your rates. A while back, I decided to pull back on offering a group program because I actually really enjoy doing the one-to-one work. But there's a limit to how many clients I can take on, especially as I'm also coaching and training on a year-long acceleration program in partnership with Miracy. And that's why now I only take a handful of one-to-one clients through my 90-day program at any given time because I put my heart, soul and intellectual time into helping those businesses grow and I need to be really selective about who gets a spot. It's your business. You get to call the shots. So make sure you're charging what you're worth for the results that you help people achieve. So a lot of the time we talk about return on investment or ROI, but that's not the real way to sell high priced packages. If you want to know what keeps a lot of consultants, coaches and service providers from charging what they're worth, I'm going to share that with you. It's actually the all too common belief that I'm not sure I'm as good as that. Or I sometimes hear I'm not a salesperson. And combine that with a healthy dose of it's rude to discuss money. And you can see why it's just easier to keep your rates low to not kind of push the edges, money mindset stuff, right? But strategically, there's also a lot you can do to leverage your expertise in a tangible way. If you're willing to think of your services from a different angle. When I do this exercise with my clients, not only do they see things in a clearer light, but selling suddenly won't feel so salesy. You see, These are things that are currently in your blind spots and they're holding you back from seeing and charging for what is your true value. Here's how traditional pricing discussions go. You talk to a potential client and you explain what you can offer, how your service or program works, what they can expect and how many calls, emails, phases of work, length of contract, how many days, etc. And then you say, my rate or fee is XXX. Your client either says yes, no, or another answer that's pretty much the kiss of death, which is maybe, or let me think about it, or okay, I'll get back to you on that. Well, let's turn it around. Rather than focus on what they will get from you in terms of input, time, days or effort, take a look at what they will achieve in terms of output or better still outcomes. That is benefits, gains and impact. Some of it's short term and some of it's longer term. For a business coach, this is easy. Money talks. You have your ROI, return on investment. 
so you can share how much more profit your clients will make after your work together. If your coaching fee is $1,000 a month, but you can show them how to increase sales by $3,000 per month, then your price is worth it, right? If you can promise that they'll earn back three times over, not only while you're actively working with them, but for the rest of their business life, it's a logical decision. The questions you then have to address are, can you deliver? And what happens if you don't? What you're doing here is not talking about the cost of your consulting or coaching services, but rather the cost of them not hiring you. Because if they don't work with you, they're losing the opportunity to increase revenue by $3,000 a month. What about other kinds of coaches or service providers, though? Well, the same applies. Rather than price yourself as a commodity, find a way to show your clients the cost of their inaction. If you're a therapist or life coach, inaction to your potential client might mean years of feeling unhappy and unfulfilled. Imagine what it might be worth to your client to lift that depressing burden forever. The same goes for health and wellness coaches or holistic therapists. Can you add 10 years to the life of an unhealthy, overweight man? What about quality of life if you're no longer stressed or in chronic pain? That's truly priceless. What about dating coaches? For someone who's been unlucky in love, in and out of one bad relationship or another, fears years of living a lonely life, the promise of a man or woman who will love and cherish them and someone to share their life with, that's worth nearly any price. You just have to paint the picture. They have to see it. Just ask yourself, what do they need to know, understand and believe in order to see it? and say yes to your program or service. What will life business look like without your program or service? And what can it look like with you? Once they see the difference and the possibilities, pricing becomes nearly irrelevant. In your sales narrative, you need to walk them through the thinking process. The need, the pain, the urgency, the cost of inaction, the dream... Show them how you help people in their same situation. Share some social proof and examples and testimonials. Put another way, why this, why now, and why you? Got it? Good. Sold. Next thing I want to talk about is discounting. It's a word I absolutely detest and I never use. If I do so, I immediately correct myself because I've done it in error. Never discount. And I want to explain how you won't need to lower your rates for anyone. It's happened to every consultant, coach, service provider at one time or another, probably more than once. You offer a proposal or contract only to have your potential client respond with, that sounds great, but I can't afford it. I haven't got the budget for it. What do you do? Well, for a lot of business owners, their first response is to offer a discount. You create the whole rationale in your head so it feels reasonable. You argue, well, they're such a great fit and they really do need my help. Plus, maybe you think it's good karma and they'll rave about you to other potential clients and refer business to you later. Maybe, but more likely than not, what you end up with is a client who doesn't value what you do. It takes far too much of your time for far less money than you deserve. You wind up feeling resentful and wondering why you aren't earning the income you're capable of. Does it sound familiar? Well, look, it stops right here. I want you to make a promise to yourself right now that you will never, ever lower your fees to appeal to a client, because doing so truly devalues your expertise. It's cheapening the value of your services and makes the client less likely to follow through, ironically enough. And worse, it makes you feel terrible. And on the basis of that promise, I want you to send me an email. And in it, you'll write, I promise to never discount, never lower my fees, because I'm worth what I charge. I'll say it again and then give you my personal email to send this statement of intent to. I promise to never discount, never lower my fees, because I'm worth what I charge send me an email directly to j at jallison.com and I promise I'll answer you personally. 
Now, I'm not saying you can never offer special deals, but I do want you to change how those offers are made. Here's how it works. Say your consulting service or coaching package includes one six-week online course training, one 45-minute one-to-one call per month, one email check-in per week, one in-person meeting per quarter, and one mastermind retreat per year. And your potential client claims to not be able to afford your asking price of $1,000 per month. Rather than offering to reduce the price, you offer to reduce the package in order to reduce the price. So the offer you make to this prospect now includes everything except the mastermind retreat or everything except the in-person meeting every quarter. Ask what they most value and keep that in, assuming you can still deliver on the promise even if perhaps it's not as deeply embedded as with the full package or takes them longer to implement internally without that additional element. You have not lowered your fees so far in that you feel used, but at the same time, you've worked with them to create a plan that's within their budget. It's a great win-win for both of you. The same technique can be used for any type of service provider unless you're charging strictly by the hour. If that's the case, take a look at how you can reduce the number of hours you need to invest in a project while still providing value. For example, rather than offering four one-hour calls, change your plan to just two calls with email follow-ups. The client will still get plenty of value and you'll free up some time by inviting email questions rather than blocks of time on the phone or Zoom meetings. Next time you are asked to reduce your price for anything, take a close look at how you can also reduce the work you'll be doing. That way you'll never feel as if you've been taken advantage of and your clients will feel they got a good deal. So another area that I want to talk about is about raising your fees. In every service provider's life, there comes a time when you simply have to raise your fees or your rates if you charge on an hourly basis. Maybe you've been in business for years without a pay increase. Maybe your skills have recently improved through a new training course or certification. Perhaps you're just more experienced now, which often means you can do the work better and faster. So actually you're working smarter for the same fee. Or maybe you just want to attract a high caliber of client. Whatever the reason, it pays to have a plan in place before you make your big announcement. Here's where to start. First, take a look at your current clients. Will you raise their rates as well? If the answer is no, then you have to consider if keeping them will be worth your time or if you'll feel resentful at the amount of lower paid time you're spending with them. Resentment can build up, so be wary of this. It's better to raise their rates than provide substandard services due to some hidden anger? If the answer is yes, then you have to prepare yourself for potential fallout. Simply put, there are some clients, you know likely who they are, who will balk at the price hike. They'll threaten to leave. They may actually leave. Are you prepared for the hit your wallet will take should that happen? Next, consider when your rate increase will go into effect. This may be different for each client, depending on when and how they're paying you. A client who's on an annual plan might not see an increase for eight months or more, while a monthly client might be shocked to find their rate is going up in a week's time. If you can, give your clients at least 30 days notice of the increase, so they can not only budget a higher expense, but they can shop around for a new consultant, coach or service provider if they choose to. Clients often have a lot of respect for you when you do that. It shows you really have their best interest at heart. One thing that's really important is to play back to your clients what they've received and what they've achieved in your work together over the period so far. If you can bring in a value for money assessment, so much the better. Put it in words that were part of the original conversation or proposal when they agreed to hire you. And point out what's been delivered in terms of outputs and outcomes, improvements or change. Finally, if you're a little flexible and you want to gain a few new clients, you might think about creating a last minute offer. Announce that your rates are going up on whatever date, then offer to let X number of new clients lock in your current rate if they sign a contract right now. 
or you can offer to continue to give them the old rate if they bring you a new client. There are lots of ways to use a price increase as an incentive for renewals and referrals. Sure, you'll still be working at your old rate, but with a few new clients on the roster, your cash flow will definitely improve. It really depends on whether you're looking to leverage your time and take on less clients for more money, or whether you actually have capacity to increase your client base. The most important thing to remember about price increases is this. You have to feel good about the rates or the fees that you're charging. If you think your prices are too low, chances are that they are. Raising them will not only make you feel better, but it just might let your current and prospective clients know the value of your services as well. Once you go through this process and raise your prices, trust me, you'll wonder why you didn't do it sooner. The next thing is to talk about confidence. Confidence is clarity. So how to discuss your prices like a pro. Does the topic of money make your mouth dry and your hands sweat? Do you dread that point in a conversation where someone says, so what does it cost? Or what do you charge? Well, you're certainly not alone. Most of us have difficulty talking about money, let alone asking for it especially when it comes to quoting prices for our own work. But if you're going to be successful in business, you've got to get over it. I talked about this way back in episode 23, how to use consultative sales to enroll clients with ease and grace. If you want to listen back, or you can read the article. And I touched on it again in episode 31 with regards to selling online programs through a discovery call. 20 minutes in if you're listening, or you can read as an article as well. So what's going to help you get more confident transitioning to the offer and talking about the price? Well, here are some tips that have served me really well over the years. Number one, do practice. The first rule for declaring your prices with confidence is simply to practice. Talk to yourself in the, in the mirror or the shower or tell your dog what your rates are. Stand in front of your mirror and say, I charge X per hour and I'm worth it. The more you say your fees out loud, not in your head, the more natural it will be for you. I know it sounds silly. I can hear myself saying this, but trust me, it really works. The second is do smile. Even if you're on the phone or writing an email, smile when you say your fees. Your tone of voice changes when you smile, as does the tone of your typing. And that tone can convey confidence and authority not to mention professionalism. Number three is don't be wishy-washy. Listen to yourself as you speak to potential clients. Do you say things like, well, normally I charge, or actually my rates are, or do you think that XX will work for you? These and others like them are all wishy-washy ways of talking that do not instill confidence in your client. And worse, they make you sound like you don't believe in yourself or that the price is negotiable. Rather than squeaking out a timid, uh, I charge, well, like $1,000 a month, straighten your back, smile and say, my rate for VIP coaching is $1,000 per month. Where should I send your invoice? And then, four, say it, then shut up. (laughs) When we're nervous or feeling intimidated, we tend to talk. We want to fill the silence. We feel awkward and we want to say anything, just anything, just to avoid having to sit there uncomfortably and wonder what the other person's thinking. But guess what? Your prospect is just as uncomfortable talking about money. They may also feel uncomfortable with the silence. And psychologically, the one who speaks first is at a disadvantage. That's from sales training. But more likely, Actually, they're silent because they're processing the price you just confidently told them. They're trying to work out if it works for them. Or they're trying to work out how can they make it work. So they need that time to ponder. Best advice when you're talking about price, avoid the urge to fill that silence, especially because you're most likely to try and justify your pricing, which isn't necessary. Let your potential client take time to digest the conversation the price, and formulate a response. Will speaking with confidence always land you a new client? No, but being able to share your pricing in a clear voice will help potential clients know that you're confident and believe in what you do. 
And that goes a whole long way in helping them see that you're the right consultant, coach or partner for them. And that's what I got today. So next time you have a proposal, follow up or sales conversation, let me know how it goes. Maybe it's an area I can coach you in. I do hundreds of enrollment calls a year and it's a consultative conversation and in many ways too, a coaching conversation. I've helped lots of consultants and coaches close more contracts so I know I can help you with how to present the offer and the price, whether in written form or verbally or both. I'm actually one of the top closers, not only for my own consulting proposals and coaching programs, but also for our year-long $20,000 ACES program. So let me know where you're at with pricing and closing your core program or service. I'm pretty sure I can definitely help you with both. Till next time, have a wonderful week and all success to you. Ciao, ciao for now.